Hi, my friends. I'm going to tell you a story today. Now, my friend Corbin, who is five years old, contacted me and he said he enjoyed my music times, but some of the songs were for younger friends. So this story is for some older friends and I have a, a song game experience after um, for my older friends as well. I want you to find a comfortable place to sit. You might even want to close your eyes as you listen to the story because there's no pictures to this story. It's just my voice. I've got my cup of tea here. So I'm all ready to tell the story. And I forgot my glasses. Right behind you. <laughs> because there's lots of words in this story. This story is taken from a book called Tales Alive. And they're multicultural folk tales with that some activities, but it's retold by Susan Mill Millord. The first story I'm going to tell you today is Argent from Argentina. It's this tale from Patagonia, a region in the southernmost part of South America. And I want, after the story, when we're all done, I want you to go look on a map where South America is. It describes how a peaceful group of people are forced to make a difficult decision in order to save the way of the life. The story of the gentle people. Long, long ago, this land was home to a community of gentle people who were as happy and content as they could be. They lived in complete harmony with one another and with all the natural world. Theirs was a beautiful land, crisscrossed by clear streams and brightened by sparkling jewels that lay upon the ground. The countryside was blanketed with sweet smelling flowers because when one was picked, two more grew up in its place. The people had a special magic to turn flowers into living birds. And so the air was filled with happy bird song from morning till night. And all the wild animals, even the shyest creatures, were fearless and tame. The gentle folk were ruled by a kindly prince who was as wise as he was good. He gathered his people together on the eve of each full moon to celebrate the community's good fortune. The animals and birds would join them, sharing in the music and laughter. And once a year, a special celebration was held. And on this day, each person was granted one wish. Life was so good that the gentle people often couldn't think of nothing to wish for. There was one thing the prince forbade the people to do, and that was to journey so far north that they no longer could see the star of the Southern Cross. The prince told his people that a forest stood just beyond that point, a forest so dense that daylight never penetrated it. As none of the people had any wish to leave their own country, nor any desire to visit this forbidden place, they were troubled by their prince's warning. One day, a member of the community chanced upon a bird unlike he had ever seen before. Its shimmering feathers were colored like a rainbow, and its song was so haunting that it stopped the man in his tracks. The man drew closer to the bird to see it more clearly, but when he was near enough to touch it, the bird flitted away to another branch. The man was puzzled because no bird in this happy land had ever done that before. He tried to approach it again. Speaking soothingly and extending his hand, the bird flew a short distance away to another tree. The man was completely enchanted by this mysterious bird and he followed after it. The bird fluttered from one tree to another and before he knew what had happened, the man found that he had been led right into the forbidden forest. It was so dark that he could not even see his hand in front of his face. The man blindly stumbled on until he found himself in a small clearing where a group of fierce looking men were gathered around a fire. They were clothed in ragged skins and their teeth were yellow and pointed. Some were eating the raw flesh of animals. Others were arguing and roughly shoving one another. When the fierce ones spied the man from the gentle people, they quickly surrounded him, tearing at his clothing. Some grabbed the feathers from his hair. Others snatched the gems he wore on his fingers and around his neck and wrist. The man was even more astounded when the brutes began fighting amongst themselves for the things they had taken from him. Horrified, he turned and he ran from the forest, not stopping until he was back among his own people. The man went straight to the prince to tell him what he had seen in the dark woods. The prince listened to the tale in silence. 
You have met the greedy and selfish people, he said with a grave voice. I hoped this day would never have come. I must call a gathering of all our people to let them know what has happened and to decide what we must do. And so a meeting was called. All the people, animals and birds, gathered as they always did at celebration time, filling the air with laughter and song. But when they saw the sad face of their prince, they fell silent and they waited for him to speak. I have terrible news for you all, the prince began. The greedy and selfish people who live in the dark forest have discovered us. Then the prince asked the man to tell the others what he had seen in the cheerless place. For the first time, the gentle people could not smile, but looked at each other very sadly. The selfish ones will not be satisfied until they've discovered where we live, the prince told his people. We must prepare ourselves for their arrival. How will we do that? asked a woman in the crowd. Well, if you like, I can arm you all with weapons, and we can fight the greedy ones when they come. He paused for a moment and then continued, but you'll be taking a great risk if you do that. Having learned to fight and to kill and to bring death upon others, you will turn upon each other and bring death to your own people. The animals will learn to fear you and will run from you when they hear you approaching. The flowers will no longer blossom as they do now and the sparkling gems will be hidden from sight deep within the earth. The people all looked at one another, shaking their heads. We don't want this to happen. Is there no way we can change our shape so the greedy ones do not recognize us? Prince thought for a moment. Follow me, he urged, and all, his, all the people turned and ran after him. And not a moment too soon, because the greedy and selfish people had just crested a nearby hill, trampling flowers and kicking up stones as they came. The people ran, and when they reached the river, the prince told them they would be changed once they had crossed to the other side. The people splashed into the shallows, and one by one, as they climbed up on the far shore, they turned into... Hognaga, no, sorry, Honaka's relatives of the gentle llama. The prince was the first to ford the river, and he too, oh, the, I'm sorry, the, pr the prince was the last to ford the river, and he too was transformed into Honako, slightly larger than the rest. To this day, when you see these stately creatures gathered in their herds, you can always tell which one is the prince. He is the tallest one, standing guard away from the others. He is keeping a lookout for the, uh, for the greedy and selfish people. It is said that whenever you see Hanako die, whenever, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is said that whenever a Hanako dies, a gold-tipped blue flower springs up in its place. When the very last Hanako left on earth finally dies, the greedy and selfish people will also be extinct. When that happens, the blue flowers will all bend their heads to the earth together and the gentle people will return to their land to live in harmony with the natural world as they once did long ago. And that's the end of the story. This, this story, the language that they speak in in Argentina is Spanish. And that word, I don't know if I was saying it, meaning it right. I'm going to, I, you, I brought it up for you because you might have somebody Spanish in your family and you can let me know if I didn't say it right. Um, it's, it's kind of a hard word when you have to speak a different language, but you can check that out um, and I printed it up there. The, the special community, these, these, these people, they, they had once a year when they had their spell celebration, they all got together and they got to make one wish. And I like you with everybody in your family Everybody gets to make, write down on a piece of paper, maybe what your one wish, if you were one of these people, would be. What would you wish for? And you only get one wish. Okay, thank you. Action. Hi, everybody. Okay, are you ready for this song? Some of you know this song. This, again, is from my older friends. I have my penny here. And you might have to dig around your house for a penny because in Canada, we don't use pennies anymore. There's a penny in my hand it will travel through the land is it here is it there it will travel everywhere is it in this hand or this hand oops <laughs> you couldn't see this hand or this hand are you sure 
Were you right? Okay, get ready to watch. There's a penny in my hand. It will travel through the land. Is it here? Is it there? It will travel everywhere. Okay, which hand is it in? Oh, you guys are really good at this. Okay, are you ready? Ah, were you right that time? I'm really good at this game too. I'm a good trickster. I'm going to do it one more time because you can get watch this over again. I want you to learn this song and I want you to be a good trickster and I want you to get somebody to record you doing it. Okay? And you can share it with me. There's a penny in my hand. It will travel through the land. Is it here? Is it there? It will travel everywhere. Is it in this hand or this hand? Are you sure? I don't know. Ah, good job. Okay, I want you to practice that and I want you to get an adult to videotape you and I want you to put it in the responses. That they'll know how to do that so that I can see how good you are at the penny song. See you later.